All right, everyone. We're going to be talking about developing an image gallery today. So basically what we want to do is create a very nice structured set of images that, or set of thumbnails really, that when you click on them, they'll take you to a larger version of the same image. So for example, I just showed you, uh, that was a picture of who we call Big Joe in our department. If you click on Big Joe, it'll take you out to a larger version of him and there he is. So it's a really great way um, of adding a new dynamic to your site. Uh, in many, I've been to many sites where they provide little thumbnails, but there's no way of clicking on them to see them in a, in a larger state. So this is a really fun and cool way of incorporating that, that tool into your site. So we're going to be talking about how to do this. Now again, this is just my demo site, so don't worry about using this. So what we're going to do first is you need an image, and I'm going to show you how to save the images because, um, and I'm going to show you the way I save the images because there's a, a kind of a, a dynamic that needs to be followed, a set of rules that needs to be followed um, in order to really get the most out of this. So I'm going to come right over here to my other tab, and I found this cool little picture of a cat and a dog. And there they are. Uh, you can enlarge the picture, and there, there he is. Right? Look at those eyes. So what I want to do first and foremost is I want to right click and I'm going to save this image. Now for every image gallery you're going to need two versions of the same image. You're going to need one that you're going to leave it as it is. So in this case I'm going to save one that I'm going to want to leave it just as it is. Just like this. And then I want to have a second one that I'm going to modify and make a little bit smaller um, so that it's actually a true thumbnail. So I'm going to save the image as and that's a weird name so I'm gonna give it a better name like dog underscore cat um, now I'm gonna come back up to the front here and I'm gonna type in LG underscore LG meaning large that means I'm not gonna to touch this picture I'm gonna leave it just as it is this is gonna be the large version of my image okay once I do that make sure it's saved into my well in this case it's my CIS 1055 demo folder um, it could be your CIS 835 demo folder or your lab folder, whatever it is. I'm going to click Save and Done. Now we're not done with the picture yet. We're going to save it again. So I'm going to right click and Save Image As. This time, instead of calling it LG, I'm going to type in SM underscore dog underscore cat. Nope, that says, does not say dog. There we go. Okay. Again, SM standing for small, meaning small. Um, this is going to be the image that I'm going to modify and make much smaller, make it my thumbnail. Okay? So great, once I have that in there, I'm going to click Save, and there we go. Now, just as a note, when you do the SMs and the LGs, it's great to keep that uh, as a consistent naming convention, because when you go to link all these images, all your LG or your large images are going to be uh, together because Dreamweaver will categorize them alphabetically and all of your SMs or the smaller versions will be together as well. So again that's my naming convention. You can choose the naming convention that works best for you. Um, so you don't have to use the LG and the small or the LG and the SM. You can kind of do whichever way you want. You can do dog cat one, dog cat two. I've seen people do that. That works just as well. Just as, well. as long as it makes sense to you. Um, the other thing is when you're saving images, especially offline or if you're saving, taking them from Facebook, um, make sure that you're giving them a naming convention that makes sense. Um, you don't want to have image 135B81055590 um, because that wouldn't make sense. You wouldn't know which picture that is or which image that is. Um, so make sure you're, you're kind of renaming them to something that makes a little bit more sense and is easy to find. Okay, so that's my little spiel about naming conventions. We're going to get out of this. I'm going to minimize my browser here. And I'm right back into Dreamweaver. Now, like always, I start here on my template page um, because I want to save another page. We've done page one, which was, if you've watched the other videos, page one was the image map. Page two is the um, uh, embedding of video. And so now we're going to save this as page three. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. And I'm going to call this page three. Now again, your pages shouldn't be called page three. You shouldn't be using my naming conventions um, for my pages. Yours could be called whatever you know, whatever page it is in your site. So save, and there we go. I have my page three. So I want to get this set up. Now there's a few things I want to do before.
before I actually start bringing in the pictures and modifying things. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a table. Okay, um, You might be asking, hey, we have a table already. Why do we need another one? Well, you kind of want to kind of bring uh, tighten up the reins when you're using images. You don't want the images kind of flying around the page, flying around your table that's there. So what we're going to do is we're going to call what's called a nested table or nesting tables. So we're going to put a table inside of a table to help keep those images exactly where we want them um, without them flying all over the place. So we're going to go to insert and I'm going to go to table. Now for the requirements on your site you need uh, eight images in your image gallery so I'm gonna do two rows I'm gonna have my uh, my image gallery going um, horizontally across the page and I'm gonna set it up with four columns and I can make it 80 percent now remember 80 percent isn't 80 percent of the entire screen It's gonna be 80 percent of that table and I think that'll work very nicely uh, for this one I'm gonna leave the border thickness on for right now I can take it off later if I really want to and I'm gonna put it in Great, there it is, we have our table. Um, we want to do a few more things to make sure that our table is prepped and ready for the image gallery. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is come down here to my properties inspector and I'm going to change that from default to center. Okay. Again, just symmetry, I like to keep everything really nicely uh, aligned. Um, everything else is in the center right now. So I'm going to put my table in the center as well. The other thing is I'm going to highlight all of these cells in my table. Again, I do that by clicking in the first uh, cell here and highlighting all the way across. I'm going to right click and align all of those to the center um, so that any uh, images that are placed in those cells are automatically aligned to the center. And then I'm going to come down here to my properties inspector and where it says width, I want to make sure that my, t my cells don't change size as I'm uh, inserting images. So what I want to do is I want to have each one of my cells, since we have four cells, um, I want to have each one 25% uh, in the width. So 25% of the entire table I want each cell to be and I press enter. Now it doesn't look like it did anything and that's great. That's exactly what I want. If I put my mouse back up here you can see that this says it's 25% now. This is 25%, 25%, 25%. Perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. Now we can start manipulating images. So uh, before we do anything else, oh sorry about that, we're going to control S to save it and now we can start in, uh, inserting images. So what I want to do is I'm going to insert. I'm going to go to image and click on image. Now again this is a Mac, it might not look a little bit different for you if you're working on a uh, PC, but basically insert image. And You see it brings this up and you can see that my two files are right here. I have my SM and my LG right there um, and that's what I want. So I told you the LG we're going to leave alone because that's going to be the larger version of the image. I want to work with the smaller version, the one that I'm claiming to be smaller. Right now they're about they're the same size. You can see that right here, right? 190 kilobytes. Um, but we're going to change that. So I'm going to click on the SM underscore dog uh, underscore cat and click open. And it's really large, um, larger than my almost my page, right? And that's fine for right now. Now, here's my tip for, every, for all of you. When creating an image gallery, it's always a good idea to keep all the images the same size and the same orientation. So what does that mean? Well, you want to make sure that they're all the same size. You don't want to have one really large image right next to a really small image, next to a, a medium sized image. You want to keep them consistent in size all the way across the image gallery. Also, you want to keep the same orientation. That means you want to make sure that all the landscape uh, pictures are together and all of the portrait-oriented pictures are together as well. This uh, will remove some of the the sloppiness that is that can be seen when you're you know when you have a, a portrait picture next to a landscape picture. It sometimes gets a little fuzzy, a little lost in there, um, and it takes away from the aesthetic of the site. So, those are just my suggestions for you. Um, and I personally like working with perfect squares. Um, they're easy to use um, and you don't have to really worry about landscape and portrait because they're already there. Now this won't work for every picture, especially if it's um, a portrait picture to begin with. Sometimes things get a little fuzzy and a little pixelated, so it's up to you to kind of make those decisions. But 
to make a perfect square, this is how I do it. I will click uh, this little constraint in this little lock right here. Um, it says toggle size constraint. By unchecking that, that means that I can freely manipulate the width and the height. If that was on, if I had it locked, that means when I change the width, the height will change accordingly. It will keep the ratios the same. Um, so if I made an adjustment to the width, the height will change. If I made an, uh, an adjustment to the height, the width will change. I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to uncheck that. And I'm going to click in here. And I'm going to make this a really small image because you can see that my site is kind of small in itself. So I'm going to make this, let's say, uh, 200 pixels. And again, perfect squares by 200 pixels. I can click on the page to see what that looks like. And right now it looks a little sloppy, so I can kind of click out and let the page readjust. It still looks a little large to me, so I'm actually going to click on it again and change this one more time to 150 by 150. There you go. That looks a little bit better to me. Um, I like that. And you can still see the picture clearly. So what I'm going to do now, after I've made that adjustment, I click the little um, check mark here, which means commit to image size. This is actually going to change the size of the image. Um, and it's actually going to, so it's no longer going to be that 190 kilobytes. It's actually going to be much smaller now. It gives you a warning saying, hey, this is going to permanently alter the, uh, the, the view or the, the way the image looks or the size of the image. Do you really want to do this? You definitely want to do it. Just click OK. And there it is. Okay, I can put my constraint back on if I really want to. And there it is. I have a really nice little picture. Now, we have the thumbnail. We need to make sure that it's getting to the larger image, that when I click on it, it's actually going to show me the larger version of that image. To do that, I'm going to come down here to my point, to my link here, and I'm going to use my point to file method. So I'm going to click right here with these little crosshairs, and I'm going to drag all the way up to the larger version of that same image, which we called LG underscore dog underscore cat. Or at least that's what I called mine. Yours would be whatever the name of your image is. And I let go, and there you go. You can see that the source is the SM underscore dog underscore cat, and the link is to LG underscore dog underscore cat. That's exactly what I want it perfect. Okay? Um, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it into each one of these. Now, you wouldn't do this. You would be uh, putting a new image in each one of these boxes, but again, like I say, like I said before in my other two videos, um, you definitely want to add some text to this. Let people know what they're looking at. If you have a picture of you and all your friends, um, I, if I re, you know, looking at it from the outside, I wouldn't know if those are your friends, if those are your cousins, if those are your family, maybe brothers, sisters. You definitely want to give them, um, give your audience some kind of instruction, some kind of detail of what they're looking at. So I'm going to say this is a dog and cat, right? Pretty simple, pretty clean. And copy that over into all of the other cells. And there you go. So I have my dog and cat. That's my image gallery. Let's take a look at uh, see if it works before we actually end this tutorial. So I'm going to come out here to my browser. I'm going to click on Safari. Again, if you're using um, a PC, you can use Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, or Firefox. And here we go. And great. So if I click on any one of these, they should take me out to a larger version of the image. And there it is. Perfect. It's exactly what I wanted to happen. It's a great looking uh, image gallery right there. Again, all the same size, all the same orientation. Gives it a really clean, streamlined look. That's exactly what I wanted. So I hope that helped. Um, again, like always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, um, and I'll be more than willing to help you.